Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. We are the 9 April 2024. Today, around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportel, Hervé Lemeur, uh, Stéphane Merle, and Bruno Verarten. Uh, Mark Wait and Kevin Martins won't be available today, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, announcement uh, the weekly 2.053. Uh, is out. Uh, release and packet release went well. We had an issue with the packaging script. Uh, was it was stuck on OS, OSU OSL sync. Um, after a certain time, OSU OSL start to be really slow when copying data. So we have to wait for the next sync.sh cron tab on the PKG virtual machine, and the packaging build is stuck. Uh, Every time we have to cancel the packaging bill when uh, it's stuck on that part. And then uh, we have to finish the sync manually on PKGVM by running the script as mirror brain. And if not uncached by the changelog publication to Jenkins IO, thanks to uh, Kevin and Dervis work, uh, we have to uncache fastly if it's not already done. Today that part was done, so no manual action. If you are wondering what manual action should I run, you get the pipeline of the packaging uh, job, you read it, and you run the steps by yourself. Um, a long-term fix is to get rid of the OSU OSL sync in favor of archive Jenkins IO. So then uh, the on, we have to to think about that pattern that might involve different details and rethinking how the mirrors are getting the artifacts uh, because we might need to contact all mirror manager to change their source of truth from OSUSL to archive Jenkins IO. So there is a bit of work involved, but not really complicated. That's something we mentioned. And in that context, it's an opportunistic uh, mention here because that will fix the OSUSL slowness the release will only have to push to archive Jenkins IO. So we would have the reference and get Jenkins IO and archives as a fallback. Then we let the mirrors to get the information, but at least it's available by default for end users during one hour. Any question, clarification on this one? So change log is out. So ready to deploy on infra.ci. Um, do you have other announcements? Do we plan to do major uh, operation on the production until the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Next production operations. Uh, can you give us a summary just as a reminder, Stefan? Yes, uh, in order to uh, plan the migration of Infra CI on ARM64, we first need to uh, change the kind of volume for ZRS, meaning a, a non-specific um, uh, region uh, area, no region um, volume. Uh, so uh, I did already uh, created the new storage place, and we need to move the the volume to uh, that uh, a class as a ZRS. Once that uh, will be done, and, and hopefully that will be on Thursday, we will be able to try to move uh, um, Infra CI to IRM64 because um, the, the zone uh, for IRM is specific because Azure um, only provide IRM on one zone. If I remember correctly, it's, it's zone one. And uh, and for now, our volume and our instances and nodes for Intel are on zone three. So the volume will be able to switch from one and to three with the ZRS. And um, hence, if we have any problem with the ARM64 migration, we will be able to roll back and still have the same volume available for one or the other. But Maybe. that ARM what? part will, uh, will occur either Thursday Later. after or, or or after a few days after, we'll see. 
Okay, uh, first, for the first operation, we need a, a date and time. What is the expected operation date and time? Thursday around uh, 10 a.m. Paris time. Uh, so that will be 8 a.m. UTC, okay. And Thursday will be the 11th of April. Mm -hmm. But we still need to confirm together some stuff. I mean, What's the it? operation is the volume migration. Yes, that... this okay. one should be up uh, and ready. OK. And you said eventually controller migration to ARM64. Is yes. that correct? Yes. OK. We'll see later, see uh, below. Okay. Um, Hervé, do you have production operation planned until the next meeting for the upcoming milestone? Maybe uh, load testing on update of Jenkins.io. Update center, load testing. Uh, when do you plan to perform this? When I'm ready, I don't know. Uh, okay, so the idea is trying to to let everyone know uh, at least one day, ideally two, before the operation. Mm -hmm. Is that okay for you? Below, so same as the RM64. Is that okay for my notes, folks? Okay, do you see other production operation opening until next Tuesday? With impact, I don't think so. No, okay. On my side, I will have ICP Nginx uh, tuning. I plan to run it uh, every Thursday during the infra CI uh, migration. So the tuning here is uh, the last changes did nothing uh, on the warnings. So I want to increase the memory usage. Everything is ready. Um, I want to run it during uh, that production operation. So we will uh, uh, short shorten the, uh, the time where the, the production can be impacted. I don't see anything else. Of course, so if we, we might have others, but at least we know these three ones. Do you have other announcement, folks? OK, no, OK. Calendar. Uh, so we will have next week, uh, no, weekly, April, Tuesday. There will be an LTS release next week, as far as I remember. I think it's Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not. Com I'm not completely sure. No, it's maybe a release candidate. I don't know. No, it was last week. week. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, let me check quickly. Check. I'm stopping screen sharing just to check this one. Up. Um, yes, that will be Gen Yeah, we will have an LTS next week, the 17th. Let me screen share again. Uh, that will be day 17. Okay. Uh, so choose uh, Wednesday. I will be there to to watch the LTS. If anyone else want to participate or take care of the infrastructure watch, uh, you're welcome to to volunteer. Uh, but yeah, that means next week we will have to uh, restrain from performing operation things between uh, uh, Tuesday, so middle of the day in Paris time, and uh, Wednesday. I don't know if. It's Chris Stern or someone in Germany taking care of the LTS so early on the day, or is it someone in the US so late on the day? But yeah, uh, Wednesday will be uh, don't touch the production because LTS has the priority, unless it's something directly to help the LTS release, of course. Any question? 
Okay, I haven't seen any security advisory. And next major event, propose we skip that one because yeah, I think it's CDCon. That's it. Oh, we lost Stefan. Internet, most probably. Uh, just a quick check on the cloud budgets. Uh, so last month, we spent uh, 4.2, almost 4.3K on Azure on the CDF paid account. Uh, for the current month, we have consumed today 1.1, almost 1.2K. We are forecasted at 4.1, so same same consumption. Uh, for, uh, the forecast is not really precise. It can be more or less 200 uh, credits. So still uh, soon. Still too soon to say if it's better, but yeah, nothing exceptional. We don't see red alerts, so let's continue in that direction. Um, a word on the Azure sponsorship. Uh, I will uh, I will send a message to the board, and we need to check if we can extend the end date for the Azure credits because that looks they, they has been applied in October. And that's only valid, at least on the web UI, until 31 May. So we should reach to Microsoft to see what we can do. Uh, because we have a lot of credits that will be a shame if we if we lose them. Um, so extending the dates or adding credits and extending, I, I don't know what's, but uh, if that's okay for everyone, I will contact the, the board so we can discuss this with the CDF. And if possible, I will ask them if they renew or add credits, I will ask them to do it on a shared account and not only on mine, because right now I'm the only one having access to the consumption bill, which can be really annoying if uh, the other team member needs to be autonomous in that area. Consumption is uh, a good rate. Uh, we can consume more when we will start to move infra CI agents on that part, if you see other way of consuming this one, don't hesitate. Oh, Mark is there, perfect. Hello, Mark. Hello. So just in time, because I otherwise I would have sent, it, sent a message to the board. Um, I've realized when uh, getting the credits that the Azure sponsorship account, uh, as we have a lot of credits left, but okay. the date is written as end of May 2024, which looks like a bit short. So I wonder if we shouldn't start contacting uh, the CDF contact who at Microsoft will let us add the credits, just to be sure. Maybe it's only their system and we have more time. But yeah, I'm thank bit... you. Yes, I will. I will raise that immediately. So, so we've got 32k left, which is good. Right, we've spent eight k. We've spent eight. That's good. Exactly. Uh, but huh, May thirty one May expiration is the wrong expire date. Yep. Great. So, so let me yeah. take that. I'll I'll start the email immediately. And and the second point is that if they start going on a renewal, even if it's a positive outcome, uh, we need to be careful on which accounts do they use the renewal. I wouldn't mind having a shared account because right now I'm the only one having access to the uh, to the credit consumption because the credits were applied to my uh, Azure account. So if they want to renew or apply new credits, I will try to set up a shared account now that we know how to share an MFA. Uh, so they would apply the new credits or renew on that new account. So everyone here will be able to, to see the consumption. Okay, so if... The, I think what you're saying, and I'm I'm playing it back just to be sure. I think what yep. you're saying is, if Microsoft says that thirty two thousand dollars absolutely expires thirty one May twenty twenty four, but we will issue you a new donation to a different account. In that case, it would be better for Jenkins if we had that assigned to a different Azure account that has multiple people owning it. Absolutely, multiple people with access. Great. Thank you. Okay, I will if it, work that. If it's not possible, then uh, what I will do is that I will create a new administrator account for me, like the portal dash admin at Jenkins Azure IO, and I will set up a shared credential for my current account, at least uh, for Hervé, you and Stefan, and my account will be used by everyone then. Great. Um, 
any question on Azure, whether CDF or Sponsor? Nope, okay. Um, another warning on the AWS CloudBees consumption. Uh, the consumption is still a bit high, same order of magnitude forecasted as last month. But that means we need to act on that one uh, as soon as possible because it's a lot of credits and we have to decrease uh, this. Um, which, by the way, need us to continue working on the AWS credit sponsor. I've checked the, the date time, that's 31 January 2025. Ah, good. We already okay. mentioned it. Well, so that's, that's I important. Sure. I wasn't sure on the expiration date. So what that tells me is what we need to submit for is the 2025 renewal because mm -hmm. our current donation expires just after the end of 2024. Good. Exactly. Thank you. So I have not, I have the action item and maybe we want to put it in here. Mark Waite has the action item to submit the 2025 um, request for donation. And I'm going to requ request the same donation again Makes sense. Uh, because, well, I, I guess I could ask for more. We would certainly use more. Um, my worry is if I ask for more, they may say, how much have you already used? And we're not yet consuming. Exactly. Uh, the, the method that are rated on Digital Ocean will be better there. Uh, and that's exactly what you described. Okay, thank you. Uh, check with CDF for extension. At this date or renewal. Okay, uh, uh, I will give details on how to get started on this one, uh, on the, one of the tasks later. Uh, and Digital Ocean, so we also have an expiration date. Uh, uh, I said uh, we didn't, I, uh, I was sure, but at least on their web UI, it's written to Tegon January 2025, and we had 17 credits left. Uh, right now, uh, we have consumed for this month uh, 255. So we are on a, a teeny month on Digital Ocean, which means um, most probably we should think about using Digital a bit more on the upcoming trimester. So first AWS sponsor, Digital Ocean could be a solution for the new update center as a secondary or third mirror, but also for uh, get Jenkins IO mirror I remember when Stefan started, but we never had the priority on this to use Digital Ocean agents, virtual machine agent, but that's instead of the current uh, Kubernetes. We could increase the Kubernetes cluster size as well on this one. So more builds for plugins on Digital Ocean in, instead of AWS, whether CloudB is a sponsor. And also we have CloudBees AWS account virtual machine for two tiny services that require uh, uh, virtual machine migration. That could be an opportunity to move them on digital ocean where we already have archives that Jenkins that are running. Any question on the cloud budgets clarification? Nope. Okay, is that okay for everyone if I add this to every meeting or should I stay once per month given the time it takes on the weekly meeting? For me, I like it every week, but uh, I'm okay if you do it less frequently if we if if really needed. Okay, I, if I don't mind giving the time and I, it helps me a bunch to be sure that we stay on track. Okay, I will just confirm uh, with a message, we'll answer with emojis in async. So we will confirm for next week. And so I won't take too much time here uh, anymore. Uh, and yeah, we'll see. Uh, thanks, Mark. That that means that helps me uh, for having a feedback. Everyone can give one, not the dates. The goal is to see if we keep that formula or not. If we keep it, I will add it to the not template. Okay. Um, so let's get started on what were we able to achieve during the past milestone. Uh, a big one has been the closure of the issue replacing Blobix for by AZ copy. Uh, so we had a data center uh, unplanned issue two weeks ago due to that. Uh, the leftover were a bunch of cleanups and last minute items. Everything has been covered by Hervé. Um, Hervé, do you have something to add on this topic? Something you want to point out? 
Okay, so now we don't use Blob Expert anymore. We use AZ Copy and it's updated on each new version. I've seen three updates during the past two weeks, so great work. Uh, the takeaway here is way faster. Uh, I don't remember the numbers, but the numbers were incredible on the plugin website, contributor website, and the PKG sync that sh is less than two minutes instead of uh, 19 to 20. So it's almost a 10 time decrease. Um, yeah, so that's clearly uh, really, really useful. So thanks for that huge work, folks. We close free shoes on ACP. Uh, so ACP is now uh, including Maven Central, as we saw last week, also incrementals. And clean, that allows us that allowed us to point fingers at oh we have uh, unexpected artifacts that aren't produced by us in the release repository, or we mirror unexpected artifact that should be in Maven Central now that we have fixed the behavior and remove Maven Central from Artifactory. So all issues I've, as far as I can tell, all issues have been fixed. There is no blocker or performance issues anymore. Uh, we will have two subjects. One is really minor. Uh, I'm trying to fine tune ACP so we can remove some warnings. This is really, really minor. It's just me uh, loving the sport of tuning low level kernel thing with Nginx and memory buffer and stuff. Uh, the second one, which is more important, I've opened a new issue uh, thanks to Basil pointers. We will discuss that later, but uh, that we will need to perform an audit of the non-plugin and non-Jenkins artifact on release repository just to decide if we remove, archive, or keep them. That will be an annoying but really useful and important topic. Is there any question on the ACP or things I forgot? No? OK. Uh, we had uh, a user. Uh, submitting spam that has been uh, taken care of. So thanks for this. Thanks, Hervé, for helping the documentation team to get the permission on the right repository. Uh, plugin Wikidocs. Uh, a repository has been archived. So thanks for this one. We had an unexpected uh, update center crawler uh, root certificate expiration. So it would have expired in May, one month before the code of update center and crawler start to fail, just to let us know early enough that it's not expired. Otherwise, we would run on serious trouble. And the discovery we made is that the notification on the event of our shared calendar are personal. So I was sure I've put notification. And yes, I did. It was on mine but I was off, so I didn't receive them. And the notification weren't sent to Stefan or Avi or the team. So here, I've added again with a multiple notification, but that doesn't serve any purpose for next year. Uh, so that means we will need to find a solution for so this. The, Google, the shared Google Calendar is not enough for the team level mention. We need a bot, a GitHub action, whatever solution that will let us know uh, in advance. So we need to start thinking uh, about a solution, but we need, need something. Calendar does not share notification. Does not share notification. It's per account. We need an alternative, but just action. Um, an idea, Stefan and I discussed and brainstorm. I'm sure uh, we already have that kind of discussion a month or ago, but I don't remember. So sorry for it. someone already mentioned that. Um, having a GitHub action, eventually on the LDesk repository, that takes care of opening the issues instead of sending notifications. So when we have the meeting now and we do the triage, we would have issues such as, hey, in one week or three weeks, you will start, uh, uh, you will need to um, to rotate a certificate, expire, or whatever. Because in the end, each of these notifications lead to an issue with the, oh, uh, here is the action we are running until completion. So if we had a GitHub action with a kind of textual calendar, 
uh, that ensure it create the issues, then we will see them and track the completion of each of these issues with who is taking care of it and we shouldn't miss them. Uh, that's That was my initial proposal. Um, if that's okay for everyone, I propose everyone uh, sleep on this proposal and think about alternative solution because there might be easier things. Uh, but th yeah, that's the, the idea. Uh, using something as close as the reality as possible and the reality is that we use issues to track completion. Yeah, we, we, we should create a desk issue to discuss that. That's a good point. Um, let's open an end desk issue to describe the problem. Discuss solution and track implementation. I don't mind taking care of that, uh, writing, starting the issue and leading the topic, unless someone wants to take it, I don't mind. One, two, three, okay. The issue. And I will add it to the next milestone if it's okay for everyone, because that's a major topic for our ability to operate the platform. Okay for everyone? Thanks, Mark, for taking care of the Delphi export uh, that has been cleaned up on Artifactory, on Update Center, on the licensing, on code. Everyone is agreed. So, nice outcome for the project. Um, we close the issue with IPv6 uh, edge case if you have uh, exotic MTU. The user documented and gave a feedback on at least two solutions they use to fix that, uh, which are uh, funny solutions. We tried an SCDSA certificate, uh, at least key for certificate of, on one of our website. Technically, it works very well. We need to add the proper annotation. I've rolled back this change with the, the, the following arguments that need to add two annotation on each of our ingresses, which means it's a nightmare today because we don't have a policy system that takes care of all the ingresses. So that means we have one certificate and one ingress different than all the others on Kubernetes. That's a nightmare to maintain. So cert manager has a, an open feature request to define a default set of algorithm and certificate setup for every certificate, but that, that's not a feature available yet. So we cannot say, hey, please use ECDSA by default. It's RSA by default, unless annotation per ingress. So we know we can, technically it work, but as default, I propose to keep using RSA for now. The benefit of ECDSA is faster uncheck, so less time spent on the hops, uh, less consumption on the load balancer uh, ingress level. So that should be beneficial, but yeah, right now it's too much effort given the benefits. benefits. Is that okay for everyone? Is there any question on this one? Okay, and finally, thanks for uh, Hervé, Adrien's idea and their work. We were able to uh, decouple uh, plugin side generation from plugin in scoring. So now the generation of plugin site is using a static JSON file generated once per hour uh, by our infrastructure and published to report Jenkins IO, which is highly available. So if PHS goes down for whatever reason, plugin side will use the last. Uh, the last successful report, which is really cool because we can operate and we don't need to implement HA on PHS. Is there any question on that last one? Nope. Okay. Uh, we had three issues closed as not planned. Two are uh, duplicated and most likely a user, uh, I still don't know how user ends up on accounts, Jenkins, are you? Uh, when they are trying their local Jenkins, we might need to think, oh, on Jenkins IO to have dedicated page on get started with the wizard and the user because it, the information is spread across different tutorials. So maybe that will be worse uh, starting a page to decrease the amount of these issues. I'm not sure if it will really effective, but at least that will help uh, normal end users in the end. Uh, one was related to an artifactory timeout uh, that happened last week. 
no actionable from us because it's on GFrog and GFrog mentioned they had issues uh, and everything went back to normal. The problem happened during a CD release, so somewhere on GitHub Action Network. So it's not on uh, on our Azure pl platform, but worth mentioning and the user took care of the analysis and the closure. So thanks to them and thanks for contributing to Jenkins, of course. Is there any question about the done tasks? Something unclear, something that needs discussion on what we were able to finish? Oh, okay. Uh, now, for the next, so the work in progress for and the next milestone. Um, first of all, I've opened an issue about the Docker Hub HTTP 429. Uh, Confirmed by Docker, I was in contact with uh, two person from the tooling part and then with the engineering manager of the registry, the Docker registry. Um, and they confirmed our analysis and what has been written on the issue. I shared the issue with them. So what is happening to the Jenkins project is not a, an image rate limit. We are still under the open source uh, program and the Jenkins slash whatever image are consumed without any kind of limit by end user. However, on trusted CI, I haven't seen the problem happening on CI Jenkins IO because the rate of build looks lower, that we don't have to push the layers, but we are triggering the anti-abuse system of the Docker registry because since we moved all of our builds on the trusted CI private network with only one out uh, egress IP, that IP is marked as abusing because we are reaching 2.2K requests per minute when we are releasing an agent or a controller image. These requests are all pull and push of all layers we do from within the trusted CI network, including all agents. And since we build a bunch of images in parallel, all these requests are counted on the same rate, uh, abuse rate limit. So right now, they have increased temporarily for us for uh, until end of month, uh, a kind of uh, exception. But they told me the exception is a, a workaround, so that might not be persistent if they forgot the configuration somewhere, because it, this is not something they do usually. Uh, it's a Nicolas de Luf, uh, style workaround, they told me. So maybe that will work or maybe not. Wait, wait a second. Did they actually say Nicolas de Luf style? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. Thanks, anyway, Nicolas. I'm not, uh, it doesn't mean it's Nicolas. It I, means... I understand. It, I understand. Okay. <laughs> it, I, thank you for the influence that Nicolas has uh, exactly. on, on that the organization. That's very good. That's I great. Mean, uh, it's a style of burning Raspberry Pis on stage live, right? That's the style. Anyway, um, they confirmed that the short, uh, short-term workaround of using multiple IP egress on our gateway to spread the request is okay for them. Absolutely, that will unblock us and that will make the workaround being able to be removed. So that will be the short-term fix that we should uh, do during the next milestone. So that's why I'm proposing to keep this one. Um, on long-term, we have to think on how to decrease the big amount of requests we make against the registry, because that's a lot. Of course, it's a successful story for Docker because they provide us with really cool tools such as BuildX and Docker Compose. So all the work done by uh, Hervé, by Bruno, by Tim, on the Docker images makes them suffer from their own success. Uh, so we can do marketing and blog post and communication on that later. We need to think about a long-term solution right now. On their side, they are checking our code and see if we are not uh, having a bug inside BuildX that they could work on or fix or optimize, but that's not easy. They don't see anything obvious. Um, we have two main proposals that I made. One has been written on the issue. Um, as discussed with Irvin and Stefan yesterday, we think that switching out from the Eclipse Temering base image on the Docker files of the official Jenkins image, as you can see, we have a multi-stage. The first one is never pushed. It's, all, it's getting the Eclipse Temering and use G-Link 
to generate a new runtime, not only adapted to the Linux distribution, but also to remove a lot of things that are unneeded on the final image. Um, so here, if we change that base image to the same image that we have on the second layer, and add a run instruction that download the Eclipse team of Intarge's binary distribution, then we will greatly decrease the amount of requests we do on the Docker Hub because the Eclipse Timurin image is just there to get that binary distribution, but it has seven to 12 layers depending on the distribution of the versions. Oh. While if we use the same image as the next stage, we will have downloaded the image in any case, so we just reuse it. So that means a bit of code for us, but at least we will clearly have a direct impact and a long-term impact because that means uh, globally way less requests. Think about it. Here we download, let's say, 10 layers for that image. That's the one for Linux AMD64 uh, Debian. Then we have Debian Slim, 10 more. Then oh, eventually that's the same. Let's say the world Debian, uh, we have this, but we have 10 for Debian, 10 for Alpine. Of course, it's 10 for Debian AMD. We have 10 more for Debian IRM64, 10 more for S390X, etc., etc. I don't even mention the windows. Yeah, Minus so, only one, one application and one Java application per. Exactly. Per so the impact here will be great. That requires a bit of work for us, but that bit of work means adding a run curl or run IP, uh, I think it's PW on PowerShell. So that's a bit of work for the, the maintainer of the image, meaning uh, some of us here, but not only. That's a topic I think is worth presenting to the SIG platform today, because that would have an immediate and direct impact. And one of the positive outcome of doing this will be, hey, faster availability because this takes sometimes weeks, even months to, to be available while the binary distribution are there really soon after an official release. Um, so I propose that we get started on these two elements and see the outcome. Another outcome we discussed on medium term or long term uh, will be using staging for building the Docker images. Staging will be us spinning having a private registry inside the trusted network and we start by pulling images building the images and pushing them on the private registry and then we have a promotion step at least for the jenkins core release that will allow security team to have something to check or they could build or to the staging few days before an official release and here the impact for the docker hub will be we will spread during one hour the request. First, the bunch of pull for building the image. We will don't overload the Docker Hub immediately because then we will have to wait for the promotion, even if it's an automated one usually for the weekly. But that one is involved a lot of work, useful work related with the Jenkins security team. However, I'm not sure it would have a direct impact immediately because the whole promotion part that say, hey, let's get from our privates and pull and push the layers to the Docker Hub, how much time do we need? Because that could slow down the releases of the agents, for instance. So that's a less obvious solution compared to the base image and multiple IPs. So do we already get enough? So the, the transition from from using the container images provided by Tamarin to instead use just the binaries provided by Tamarin mm -hmm. um, seems like something I we know how to do. We know how to do it because we've done it before. It's uh, It may even be that we can bring out the old implementation and use it as a baseline. So that one seems pretty easy to me. Uh, feels like the first target. If we want to go further than that, can we can we make that choice after we have data on the impact of the first of the first change? Um, I believe we should have uh, both here okay. because that one, if not, because that problem, um, we saw that same rate limit problem happening with chocolatey. When we build our Packer images, we start sometimes to have this error and sometimes from the Ruby games distribution, because we have the same issue on infra CI network. 
So if we have the ability to implement on our Terraform module that manage the outbound gateway, the ability to, to add more public IP on demand, okay. uh, that will be always useful. And that change is not a big one because that's Got technically it. possible on the NAT gateway already on Azure. Okay, so so those two items, neither of those are particularly cutting edge or huge effort. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have to work on them. That takes a bit of time, but no unexpected surprise here. Yeah, but we need to make sure that the, the load will be will be uh, spread among all those uh, external IP and not uh, um, specific to one or uh, all the time. I mean, the spreading is not... That's uh, that's the NAT gateway specification on Azure, and that's a run robin uh, algorithm. So yes, okay. it will be spread. Okay. So, it won't be so... spread immediately. You need one hour for it to once you apply multiple outbound IP. But new connections start to use the run robin because their NAT gateway are the same thing as the load balancer they use for inbound technically. Okay. So that's a good point, good question, and yeah, the technical it's written on the documentation. So if it doesn't, then it's an Azure issue. And clearly, we will have it somewhere else. OK. Thank you. Is that OK for everyone? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I took time, but that one was particularly painful during the past two weeks. And that Ooh. could endanger any security advisory or LTS Great. release. Well, well and the, the it's crucial. We'll, we'll have a further discussion on the platform SIG, to be sure, and and close on at least the second half of this. Good. Yeah. Exactly. So now we've got next week, we've got an LTS release coming. Uh, I assume we'll want to have that. Uh, is it next week? I think it is. Yes, right? it's Wednesday. So, 17. so we will, we will, we would prefer to have the container image change before that. And even better before next weekly to next mm. Tuesday so that we can. Yes. Okay, uh, good. Uh, uh, but. The priority for me is on the infra team. I will prefer infra team validating and spending time on the spreading hypes. That doesn't yeah, restrain right. the, the two to happen parallel, but for right. me, IP is a, is a and, direct actionable to secure this one. Right, and, and, and I agree things. wholeheartedly. It's Bruno and I, as part of the platform SIG, can look at at the at the change from container image to use a binary. So that that's not something we need the infra team to do. That's something I think Bruno and I can help with. Bruno, are you okay? I'm speaking for you. I probably shouldn't, Bruno, but are you okay? Oh, yeah, you. You... <laughs> no, that's perfectly okay, Mark. Of course. Well, as a personal contributor, I'm willing to help for that too. Uh, yes. I Thanks. have a reflector on superficial Docker image that I wanted to do, and it's right. going well with that. Cool. Thanks, folks. Thanks for your help. So now it's only a matter of let's do it. Yes. Go, go, go. Um, the next one, uh, I need discussion here. Um, uh, unless you have a still question on Docker, on the Docker part. Nope, okay. Next major issue that we need to spend time on, except the update center, but we know it's already a priority. Uh, that one is a proposal for the permission model uh, to bootstrap the AWS account. So that's a permission model. What the main key is, I want to protect us. Uh, we want to be protected against uh, something stealing our credential on our administrator machines. So that's a pattern that has been shared from cloud-based people. So thanks to them, that's a nice contribution. They have shared privately because I cannot share the Terraform code that could help us to automate. They also have a AWS command, so we have different implementation paths. That's why you focused only on AWS concepts. First, we won't go on using the big AWS IAM center, and we shouldn't focus on uh, multiple high availability stuff because the scope here, as a reminder, is that we have credits until end of January. Then we don't know. So the goal is to move on that account only the CI Jenkins IOR from a real agent we want to run on AWS. So that workload is not trusted. That would involve two EKS cluster that will be migrated to a single one with pod agents, ACP within, inside, not available outside, and that should be all. We can add workloads if we have more credit, but right now 
that's the target for for one year, more or less. Given that, the idea is that the root account, uh, uh, we all have shared account, at least there is Stefan, Mark, and Hai, uh, encrypted on our, uh, G, with our GPG key on our system. We should restrain on using the account at all costs, except for bootstrapping or top-level privileged operations, such as adding or removing an admin. So I've put a message here explaining the implementation proposal. Um, I need your uh, va uh, your validation uh, either with a, um, a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the message. We don't you don't have to do it right now. The rocket but... is not good enough. <laughs> Looks good. Looks good to me. Um, but the idea is that you have 24 hours to read this and vote just to be sure I don't forget anything or if it's unclear, please add a message and we can clarify. The goal is to document this so we can get started. Um, my goal is to have the code, whatever implementation we use, but most probably Terraform, run manually once and then I will clean it up and I will ask someone else to do the bootstrap. So I'm not the best factor on this case, contrary to the Azure sponsored account. So 24 hours to get thumbs ups and thumbs down. And then I will uh, work on that issue for the next milestone. The goal is to have a draft bootstrap. And then next week we could plan the, the real life bootstrap if not already done. Is there any question? things to be clarified. Nope, okay. Um, third stop level item is update center. So I let the mic to Hervey here just to give us a summary on his part. Uh, just to let you know, Stefan and I, we've seen the GEP. We need to read it. We are late on that topic and we need to take care of that. So that's outside the Hervey's leverages. Um, and Hervey, that's your turn and about the uh, you're part of on that topic. Um, I'm currently looking at uh, PKG. Uh, uh, sorry, I have to take a call. Okay, let's move on the RM64 part then instead. Uh, Stefan, we'll uh, yes. go back to data center after. Uh, in fact, I already um, said most of it because uh, it's the, the new plan is to move the, the infra CI. It's not the new plan, but the next step of the plan. Move the, the infra.ci to the new uh, IRM64. And uh, as I explained, um, it's, it's a two-step uh, migration. The first step will be for the volume. The next step will be for the, the IRM64 by himself by itself. And that means a dedicated uh, um, uh, not pool for the controller, but at, at the end, not only the controller, the controllers and the non-agents. Uh, we, we need to find a, a better name than non-agent, not pool. If, if you can find a name, I'm, I'm all here. Um, so the signum, so I have um, requirements. Uh, sizing a new not pool. Okay, I'm, so we are. I'm, I'm yep. taking all the, the data right now mm -hmm. for uh, from uh, um, sorry, Datadog and and uh, and what we the configuration as code we got. I'm I'm compiling everything right now. Uncontroller uh, work. So this work. So we have two controller release CI and infra CI. One of the targets that uh, Stefan architectured is that we will have a smaller nodes, which mean we we should not be able to run release CI and infra CI in the same virtual machine. They will be on the same network. They should be able to ping each other, uh, modulo the, the network policy we could apply, but we would have one per uh, per node so we can spread the kernel intake and care of a controller. But we still have free, uh, let's say, non-web UI services. It's Let's say free bots running on the private cluster because they don't need public access, they only push data, such as RSS Twitter, GitHub Command Tops, and there is an IRC bot used by the Jenkins CI administrator. So these services need to be thought. Can we migrate them to RM64? And if yes, 
do we want to run them and pack everything on the same node pool? Or do we want to fill the gaps? Or do we want to use different node pools? These are two strategies that will have different involvements. Uh, as Stefan and Hervé discovered earlier today, we don't have limits CPU memory and resource allocation on the free bot. So we need to, to study with the metrics and decide whether we uh, we had limits or not, which ones. And for now, the GitHub uh, comment, but doesn't have any IRM built. So we need okay, to yeah. prove that. Exactly. So IRM 6, so that might be the answer. We don't have IRM 64 image at first sight on these free services. We know we have for the other such as Datadog Ingress. So that, need, that means maybe we want to have a node pool for the controller and another node pool for all the other services we plan to run, which means we will keep the current Linux, uh, Linux pool, which is AMD64, and you can create a new one only designed for the two controllers. Does it make sense for everyone? I believe the last mile here, Stefan, if that's okay for you, will be to do a, just a, a billing check. What is the expected cost of um, you, you per month with the current amount of nodes we have because they are really big? So what is the projection in terms of IRM64 for the controllers? And then we, we can do projection for the second one later. So you won't, you will not be uh, here close. So if it's okay, I propose one not pool RM64 only for controllers. And we do an extrapolation. Okay, it should have two nodes all the time. You allow a third one when we have a surge or when we have an mm -hmm. operation with restart. And you just do a, a billing extrapolation given the cost of the tinier node and in RM64, which is cheaper. Is yeah, that and we will have to change the, the Intel AMD node pools to, to lower the the prices because we don't use them as much as before. Yeah, but I propose this as a second step, consequence yeah. of this, but uh, decoupled. And if that's okay for everyone, uh, okay. that should provide Stefan answer on how to use the taint and toleration because that decision is a requirement for the sizing, but, but also to set up the, the scheduling of workloads. We don't want a controller trying to be scheduled somewhere else and we don't want things to be there based on that decision. And on the affinity between the two the controllers. Oh, you don't need the size will be enough. Yeah, of course. So that's the next step. So Thursday as a reminder, the first one is mandatory. Uh, we will need to migrate data to Z, uh, the Jenkins home of InfraCI to a ZDRS volume. Um, Stefan, do you want to do both a release CI and infra CI at the same time? No. Or do you want to test only this one and then we can plan ahead for release CI and other later? Yes. I'm sorry. I don't I don't speed up saying yeah. yeah. No problem. One and then the other one. Okay. Uh that's all on the RM64, I believe. Do you have something else on IRM64 topic, Stefan? If, if you want to rush it and, and have both of them, I agree but with you. No, no, I'm just asking the question. Okay. No, yeah, I don't know if you're <laughs> no, asking no because you're asking or if you no. have something in your mind. So uh, if you no. really need us to rush, it's okay, but but I do, I'm not rushing alone. Uh, no problem. Okay. And no, I have nothing more to say about our M64. I don't think so. Okay. So then back to Hervé on the update center. Can you give us a heads up on the expected task for that milestone for this topic? Yeah, I'm currently looking at uh, PKG uh, I, uh, Apache 2 logs to determine uh, how uh, what are the most requested uh, file and uh, the corresponding amount. Uh, I'm still on it. To uh, the goal is to adjust uh, a stress test on the date Jenkins that I uh something I'm still on it. Uh, I'm a bit surprised because the uh, the test, uh, the rotated test, uh, it's only one day every weeks that are kept kept, and uh, 
uh, I would have expected to have full weeks uh, saved. So uh, I, I, I got the reason. I found it somewhere uh, hidden on the issues. That's a message from Tyler that say, we cannot afford that much of logs unless someone <laughs> gives us a free platform to aggregate our logs. And the day that sponsorship is gone, we lose the logs because hosting logs is one of the most expensive yeah. thing on the cloud I, world. I, I'm looking at the logs on the machine and yes. there are logs from 29. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm, so we, I'm just saying yeah. the 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 rotation policy come from that rule. I don't say that rotation policy maps to what we see really. They might uh, because between Tyler and us there has been five years of Olivia alone, yeah. and sometimes he had to do what was needed to make the production run. So sometimes we have unmanaged things that are from the past too that we could explain why we have some holes here. Does it answer your question or does it give you pointer on the uh, point? Of the yeah, I, uh, at least I know why now there is only one day on the weeks. Mm -hmm. um, may I ask you just to, to report on the issue once you will have time, the amount of data you see, I'm interested on the uh, log size uh, yes. for one day uh, or one week or just as to have uh, an order it's... of magnitude. It's uh, per, no, no, uh not not now. Just report it on the issue, please. Uh, so it's shared, and we will know for later. Because uh, yeah, saying it aloud will just make me forget in five minutes. Sorry. <laughs> um, and second question: Do we have these logs in Datadog collected? Because we have the the the, the gadget and metrics collected for that machine. I don't know if we collect the Apache logs. I don't know yet. I don't know either. Okay. Bye bye, Stefan. Uh, okay. Um, so that means performance benchmark, and based on what we said earlier, that means if you have a meaningful low test, you should be able to plan it uh, uh, during that milestone or later. Is my understanding correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and yeah, we'll let you report on the expected part. Uh, don't oh, were you able to check the metrics from the mirror bit system on Datadog as well? Not yet. Okay, that's uh, sorry, I don't see the relation between mirror bits and uh, because mirror bits is the service you want to load test, so you need to see the metrics today and always it's used, yeah. and you need to be sure that your benchmark doesn't kill it. Might be worth if you have these metrics to check the result of the benchmark you tried uh, 28 and 29 March to see if it had an impact or not, or I don't know. But that could be an exercise for finding the metrics so you will have everything at hand. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything else on update, Jenkins. IO. Do you, folks? No? Okay. Um, so we had an issue that we asked uh, Stefan to open. Uh, we have plugin site API or plugin site generation. I'm not completely sure, but one of these two services gets data from CI Jenkins IO, which we don't want because if CI Jenkins IO is down, we cannot update plugins Jenkins IO. So in the same spirit as what has been done on plugin hill scoring, thanks to uh, Hervé and Adrian's work, we might want to do the same uh, for this one. So. Uh, we have this one on upcoming milestone. We'll see if we have time. Uh, it's not that much, so uh, I've started looking on it. If anyone else is interested, please uh, take it. Otherwise, it will be low priority in any case. No priority. Um, Mark, I'm not sure what has been decided for this one. I forgot to track it because it required Jira admin and it was a discussion about the test one. Looks like Alex never answered. You are muted, Mark. I see you speaking, but we can't hear you. Mark? Or am I? I, am I you look like Sorry, you are muted. I was oh, muted and saying something. That's shame <laughs> on me, right? I talk really great when I'm silent. <laughs> um, my action item, let me, I, I'm just going to go ahead and propose. I will close it and let. Um, Alex 
com reply if you mm -hmm. if he objects to that. I think after a week, it's a good thing to say, hey, we're we're not going to do any further because of the the Jira permissions thing I investigated. I when I made the change to implement what was suggested by Tim, I also prevented creation of all issues in the Jenkins project, and that's not a good thing. So I, I reverted that change and, hey, said, let's close this. Looks good for me. Uh, we have two mirrors item, RVE. Uh, what's the status? Do you want to continue working on it or do you want to pass the, the light on these ones? I've uh, sent an email to uh, Daniel from RCS to to know if he had any news about it. And for uh, the Ostico, I have to check if we can add uh, FTP with user and password in the FTP URL. Uh, I tried to, I started to, to, uh, to run your bits with uh, K3S on locally, but I uh, it needs a Redis database, which is not so fraud one. It needs a volume, which are not so fraud one. Mm -hmm. I also try to run uh, with Docker, but it needs an ARM64 to run on my machine. So mm -hmm. I tried with my pull requests, uh, concept pull request, but I encountered an error. So I'm still uh, still working on it. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. Um, last time I tried during the Gage and Kinsayo for the record, I'm I might have forgot to share that with uh, the team. I run successfully uh, using KMU, the AMD uh, the AMD sixty four image, and it worked very well uh, for the mirror bits on my Mac Silicon, and I was able to run a local anti Redis. You don't need the data production. What you will need, because Redis is used by mirror bits when you use the mirror bits add list or remove commands most of the time. So you can start with an anti Redis based. So you can install the official M chart locally on your K3D cluster. And then you can, you, mirror bit will see no mirror and you can add manually the mirror and check it that should work. I was able to, to add almost the same Redis data because Redis is used for the mirror you had edit or remove. And then the database is filled when mirror bits is able to scan. So if you can reach the, okay, I can connect to FTP with this credential and scan the data and start filling the local Redis, then that means it's a success, successful and you can plan to apply it in production. Is that okay for you? Thanks. Uh, we have that issue about Jenkins stat repository with John Mark tooling to move to the Jenkins infra organization. Uh, that's a low priority. I didn't have the expected time to work on it. I would want to do it if no unexpected thing happened. That's just migrating data, especially because we already have an Umbro TAP. So that means we can uh, move as it only credential changes and that should be done uh, quite soon. Um, if that's okay for everyone, let's have a, a look at the new issues. I see one issue from Mark and one from me on triage status. Do you have other new topic except these two one that we are going to triage? I don't have any others. Okay. Um, first one, Mark, thanks for opening that issue about the Markdown format of plugin to install on CI Jenkins IO. I believe it's because Marcus Winter added Markdown documentation within the pipeline uh, library feature. Or is working it, on it? Has proposed it. It is not, it's not approved, it's not merged. So this is, this is very much looking to the future. This is not something that needs to be in the next next milestone it can wait until a decision is made whether or not we're going to allow markdown okay in in pipeline step description i like it i like markdown a lot in in writing documentation but it's not currently supported 
Okay, I got the proposal. Should we start with the plugin ill scoring about on that plugin and check today what is the, the score? Sure. And if the score is not really, really, really good, what would be the, uh, let's say, the attention point on that plugin? And in parallel, I believe we should mention, and if it's okay, I will take care of that. We should mention Daniel and uh, Vadek, or at least the Jenkins security team, to ask them what's the status on what they know and their habits. Uh, because maybe there is a red flag some somehow. But the last time we had that kind of exchange with them, the red flag were, oh, that plugin hasn't been updated since years. And during the time they answered, someone adopted and started to clean up the plugin. Yeah, the plugin health score for that plugin is 100%. Oh, so, yes. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's reasonably healthy because I keep it healthy. Last release was... Uh, uh, okay, the person uh, who opened the health desk issue is the person maintaining the plugin. Exactly. Plugin. Therefore, oh, okay. therefore, it's but but the so I'm not worried about that part. I have made the request to the security team, um, asking for their review because we should not adopt this thing into ci.jenkins.io without careful thought, right? And Gensec is part of that careful thought. And and right. I, I agree wholeheartedly. We want to be very careful before we add any plugins to ci.jenkins.io. They must not affect its 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 primary mission. Okay. Uh, is that okay for you if uh, I add you uh, as a assignee and we add it to yes. the milestone? Yes, so we absolutely. Wait. And as it... soon as you have a feedback from Gensec, if it's uh, positive, then we plan uh, the, the item to take it over from you and take care right. of the installation and, and because we need infra code and stuff it's not manual thing here so Correct. is that okay for you that sounds very good i'm happy to be have this assigned to me and it, it will wait until it certainly can't there is no reason to install it prior to pipeline library documentation being supported with markdown and we don't it's not critical to us that we need to be able to put markdown in other places on ci.jenkins.io. Most of the things we write on ci.jenkins.io, plain text is good enough. Good. So I will take care of this one. The second one, so on the initiative of Basil, um, we have that audits to run on Artifactory. I believe it's a kind of, um, that should be something not at the infrascope team level, that should be a shared responsibilities because at the infrascope, we can do some of these actions, but on, if we find anything which is not HPI or GPI, finding, finding the information and making the consensus on should we keep it or delete it will be hard. It, uh, there, there will be easy one. If the artifacts are published on the Maven central repository, we can directly remove them or mm. move them on a private archive repository. So it's not used and not available unless by admins and we stop uh, publishing them on release. But I believe we will have, uh, yeah, somewhere the discussion that require a long-term contributor to have an advice. Uh, I will want, Mark, if it's possible, just to bring that audit to the board to see if we can have a way to communicate clearly. We need help on this one to have a second pair of eyes on this and not being alone on this one. Um, if we don't have anything until end of April, any if no one is able or willing to help us, I propose we start the topic in May, only inside the infra, and that might break things, but yeah, at least we will have communicated early enough to let people, hey, we need second pair of eye on this one. Is that That's, okay for you? That sounds very reasonable to me. I I don't see I don't think this needs to be done in April. So I think it this is that's more of a a good thing for us to do to to avoid future problems. But our April platter is very full right now. Okay. Is that okay to go through the board or should we just send an email directly to the Jenkins CI dev mailing list and get started on that communication layer? I, I wouldn't bother with the board. I don't think the board will consider it a governance topic. So Jenkins developers is great. Okay. So I'm taking care of that then. Uh, to ask for help. Uh, let's target May or later to really 
start working on it. Is that okay for everyone? Okay, so I'm gonna add this to the milestone because that requires just communication work, but still some work. I don't have other new item to you. Okay, we'll remove the tray edge and move everything on a milestone just after we hand the call. I don't have anything else. Okay, so if no one has other thing you want to bring, let's see next, let's see each other next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank stopping you, bye bye. Screen share and stopping recording.